because he knows all about the story. Oh, that's interesting. And that uh, mm -hmm. we didn't really understand the ramifications of this, his yeah. speech impediment in terms of or his ability. My dad King George the sixth letter on the wall. Mm -hmm. Saying well, well, saying um, uh, basically congratulations to King and Army for uh, the battle that they won in uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. Was it? Then he was in that battle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there was also the fact that there was, you know, Guy Pierce had his Nazi sympathy, you know, he was connected to Nazi sympathizers. And we Americans have no idea, but were you at all concerned that this might be a, a, a film that might not resonate with a larger audience? Or, like, that, like, or were like you glad that you're getting this idea across to, to people about this story? Um, well, I, I, I felt, and I might be, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I felt that there was a knowledge of the Wallace Simpson over the eight story in America, you know, for the bright age, uh, but I, I understood that it was framed as, you know, a sort of a, the ultimate romantic gesture, yes. to, to give up the throne for love. And I remember when I was early on in the preparing <coughs> film, I, I, saw, I saw John Patrick Shan in New York for, for talking about something, and um, and he, he described, I don't know, did he grow up in the Bronx or Brooklyn, John, but, but anyway, he, 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 he had this memory in his childhood of how whenever his father was being lazy, like not helping with washing up, his mother would go, you know, you can't do anything for love of me. You know, the King of England gave up the throne for love and you can't even do the washing up. And so that did give me an insight into what it meant in the in popular American imagination, which is this sort of ultimate <coughs> romantic gesture. Um, whereas I think in England it's viewed quite differently. And I think what's fascinating about the story is if you, you know, once you tell the story from the point of view of the younger brother, it's an astonishingly selfish act because you know, he never, and we know this from the, the history books, he never checked, he never said, you know, he hardly even met his brother during the abdication crisis. I mean, he, he only met him to tell him the news that he was going to abdicate. And, and given he knew about, you know, his brother's stutter and his sort of lack of confidence, it was an extraordinary thing just to kind of lump him uh, with it. But um, I felt that, you know, in terms of whether it would connect here, um, I don't know, I never, I kind of never worry about that because I kind of feel like, you know, it's 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 such an extraordinary story that as long as you tell it well, it's going to connect. And it's also such a universal story you know, if you tell it well, it's going to connect. Um, because I just, I mean, I can't, so sometimes people say to me, you know, how do you, you know, how do you make the sort of royal family seem like human beings? And you're like, well, I never was under any misapprehension that they weren't human beings, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think it's one of the great stories because you've got this guy who's, the younger brother doesn't expect to be king, has a t terrible stammer, he's forced to become king right at the moment in history when radio is taken off as a mass communication medium in that 10 to 15 year period when it's only a live medium, so you can't pre-record, you can't take out the stammers, and you've got the Second World War coming, and who knew that the guy who got him through this and saved him was this maverick Australian, failed Shakespearean actor, not even a doctor, self-taught, who penetrates the heart of the royal establishment, and weirdly from his otherness saves saves the king. So, you know, I, I, I think the story's um, kind of, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of felt as long as I can tell the story well, it's a great story. And then, you know, I think emotionally it's universal because we all face blocks, all of us do, between us and the best versions of ourselves, you know, whether it's shyness or insecurity or anxiety. Um, and, you know, a stammer is just a very profound form of one of those blocks that stops someone being the self they'd like to be. And, you know, the story about a, a person overcoming that is always going to connect because because we all, we're all involved in that to some extent every day. We're You're so conditioned into... Oh, sorry. That's right. Uh, we're, we're always so conditioned here in America to see these types of Hollywood films. And obviously, you know, when you see a British film, you automatically know it's different. Um, how do you make a film like this resonate with American audiences? Well, but, but the, you know, you got to remember, I, I, I did three projects for HBO, uh, which all played here, yeah. and it gave me the and the love. The greatest thing about working for HBO is they assume their audiences are clever, and you never get asked to dumb anything down. You never get asked. You know, no one. You never sit in a room. The executive goes, you know, I think that's too complicated, um, and uh, you know, we we. And then we'd like something like John Adams, which really is uncompromising in terms of its, you know, it's as much a story of ideas as of character. You know, it, it, it sold an absolute ton of DVDs, and I, you know, just anecdotally, I can tell that people have watched it from all sorts, right across the social spectrum here, once it, you know, once it became available on DVD. And so I suppose I felt, going into this, the confidence that if, you know, if you 
you're making it and you want to work in America, that doesn't mean you have to change the way you tell a story. And, and, I, and I, I think the sadness of some movie making here is that, is that you kind of feel that their their sense of the intelligence of the audience, that they're, they're pitching it lower than themselves. And I think that's kind of arrogant to kind of assume that the people watching it are less bright than you are. And, um, I mean, the, the, there's another thing, which is how much of the story they know. And I certainly tested it quite carefully in April in New York and in Kansas City to. To, to, to work out the bits of the story they didn't know. And I, you know, for example, I discovered that people didn't necessarily know that Wallace Simpson was American when I did test screenings. And so I, I made sure there was a couple of references to her being American so that people would get that. And you, know, and, 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 and you can't, and there's a difference between in, <coughs> intelligence and historical knowledge. And there's no reason why anyone should know anything of this story. And so I tried to make it in a way that brings you in if you don't know. Did Collins make any convincing to do this? It's a very brave performance. And you know, no, 